The first and the most important takeaway I have from the book is to find your partner. And if you can't remember any of the other takeaways in this video, I hope that you know you will remember this word partner and what it stands for. Hi everyone, so in this video, I'll share some of my takeaways from the book Getting to Yes with Yourself and Other Worthy Opponents by William Urey. So William Urey, he's actually the author of one of the best-selling books on negotiation called Getting to Yes. And the book was actually published in 1981, which is over 30 years ago. And ever since that popular book, William Urey has actually taught thousands of managers, salespersons, lawyers and even diplomats on how to negotiate and how we can actually get to yes with others. But over the years, he actually discovered that the greatest obstacle to a negotiation isn't about the other party on the other side, but the biggest obstacle is often ourselves because we are unable to act in ways that serves our true interests. So this book actually teaches you how you can actually influence yourself first before actually influencing others. And let's just jump straight into the key takeaways. So whether we like it or not, we're actually all negotiators and we negotiate every day. For example, at work, we may negotiate with our boss for a better salary or better job benefits. In school, we negotiate with our professors regarding deadlines and submissions. And at home, we also negotiate with our family members regarding household duties, who cooks, who cleans, you know, who buys the groceries and stuff. So negotiation actually happens in a lot of aspects of our lives and it happens in all of our conversations actually. But negotiation isn't always easy and sometimes when we don't see eye to eye with someone, it might cause conflict and lead to a strained relationship. No doubt that it's difficult to negotiate with people from the other side, but sometimes the most difficult person to negotiate with is actually ourselves. So how can we actually get to yes with ourselves? and influence ourselves first before we actually influence others. So in this book, Willem Yuri actually talks about the inner yes method, which comprises of six different steps. And these six different steps can actually be grouped into three pillars, which is yes to self, yes to life, and yes to others. So just to give a quick overview, yes to self comprises of putting yourself in your shoes, developing your inner partner. Yes to life is about reframing your picture and staying in zone. And lastly, yes to others is about respecting them even if, as well as to give and receive. So out of all these six steps, there are a few that really stood out to me and I would like to share them with you. The first and the most important takeaway I have from the book is to find your partner. And if you can't remember any of the other takeaways in this video, I hope that you know you will remember this word partner and what it stands for. So BATNA actually stands for Best Alternative to Negotiated Agreement. And in other words, this means that, you know, what is the next best course of action that you have if, let's say, you cannot reach an agreement with the other party. So just imagine that you are in a job interview and you're negotiating for better salary and better work benefits. Here, your BATNA would be another job offer that you're actually happy to accept even if this current job offer fails. By preparing in advance and going for multiple interviews, this actually gives you the confidence that, you know, even if this current one fails to go through, I'll have other interviews and other offers actually that are lined up for me and that I'll be happy to accept. So by having a partner, it's like having a solid backup plan that gives you the power and the confidence to make a decision because you will be less dependent on the other party to satisfy your needs. But sometimes we know that it might not be as easy to develop a partner because the alternatives might not be as attractive. Or especially when our negotiating counterpart appears to have greater power than us or actually has a higher authority than us, it's difficult to equalize the power imbalance and negotiation becomes tricky. For example, a client demands last minute changes to be made to the work, but you know, we tell ourselves that we need the money and you know we'll just give in and just accommodate to all his requests or when your partner or your loved one disrespects you and puts you down but you ignore their behavior because you convince yourself that i need their love so in situations like these it seems like others are in control and you know we can't do much about it because you know they have the final say and they are the one that actually controls us. So how can we reverse this and give ourselves the power to negotiate? So the answer is actually to develop your inner batna, which is actually the best batna of all. So unlike the batna that was discussed previously, which is what William Yuri coined as external batna, having an inner batna means that 
Your inner bhatna is your unconditional commitment to yourself to meet your own needs regardless of the outcome of the situation or agreement. It's almost like making a pledge to yourself, saying that, you know, I'll take care of my needs for satisfaction and fulfillment in my work no matter what. Or I will take care of my happiness and I will be responsible for it no matter what. The phrase no matter what removes all responsibility from the other party to meet your needs. So instead of placing the responsibility on others to meet your needs and to make you happy, you actually focus on yourself and focus on how you know you can actually take care of yourself. And we realize that the more we need the other party to satisfy our needs, the more power we give to them and the more power they have over us. And as a result, this makes us more dependent on the other party for our needs and it gives us less power and control during negotiation. So William Yuri actually describes your inner bhatna as the foundation of your outer bhatna. So quoting from William Yuri, he says that in the end, we have to answer this question. Who is responsible for meeting my core psychological needs? If we answer someone else, we give the power away to them. But if we answer ourselves, we reclaim the power to change our life and our future. Another important lesson that I learned is to break off the scarcity mindset. I'm sure you've heard people say that, oh, you know, it's a dog-eat-dog world out there and we have to be very strategic in our decisions because it's very competitive. And you know, if we don't compete and perform our best, we will just get thrown out and there's not enough for everyone. Even in schools, phrases of a similar meaning are being thrown around among students to describe a very cutthroat and very competitive environment. The scarcity of resources, or more often the illusion of it, actually makes us compete with each other and we fear that there's not enough to go around so we have to take care of our own needs and often at the expense of others. But this mindset of scarcity, that there's not enough to go around and we have to compete against everyone, actually hinders us from making the best negotiation. Because when we think that there's not enough to go around, the negotiation automatically somehow becomes a win or lose or a winner takes all kind of situation. So how can we actually combat this mindset of scarcity and negotiate more effectively? One of the most effective methods is to find ways to expand the pie. Find ways to expand the pie and expand the value for others before dividing it up. So for example, in a workplace scenario, your manager actually decides that there's a fixed budget to be given to two different departments. And two departments are actually competing for a greater slice of the budget. So instead of fighting with the other department and finding reasons to justify why your department needs the budget, both departments can actually work together to find ways to increase the sales of the company such that there will be greater budget for both departments. When we reframe our minds and change our mindset of scarcity to one of abundance, it actually helps us to find creative ways to expand the pie and find win-win situations for both parties. And to take a negotiation one notch up, instead of a win-win situation, you can try to find a win-win-win situation whereby you benefits you the other party as well as the greater community or the society. Think about how your actions impact the greater community and perhaps how can you potentially scale up your efforts such that it benefits more people. Because the most successful people in life are givers and not takers. Instead of claiming value for yourself, we have to think about how we can give value and create value for people. So quoting from William Yuri, he says that by changing our default mode to giving, not only can we get to yes with ourselves, experiencing inner satisfaction, but we'll also find it easier to get to yes with others, experiencing outer success. Here's a quick recap of the points mentioned. Develop your outer bhatna by having a backup plan prepared so that you can have more power and control in a negotiation. Also, develop your inner bhatna by making a pledge to yourself that you will take care of your needs no matter what the outcome is. Break off the mindset of scarcity and look for ways to expand the pie. Think win-win or even better, win-win-win for you, the other party as well as the community at large. Have you heard of other useful negotiation tips? I'd love to find out and do feel free to leave it in the comments below and I'll reply to all of them. And also feel free to share your thoughts about your favourite takeaway from the video. This is Tess here and I'll see you in the next video.